on 31, we're at the last example in this section. So I want to now define absolute maxes and mins. And again, they have two different vocab terms. So you can call them absolute maximum and minimum, or you can call them global max and global mins. All right. Um, and this means this is the ultimate max. It's not relatively speaking over a, an interval close to an x coordinate. This is everywhere. So the absolute maximum of f at a point is the function value f of c, where f of c is greater than every other value, every other f of x value for all of the x's in the domain. And the absolute minimum, let's say it was at d, um, the absolute minimum value would be f of d, where this y value is smaller than every other y value for every x value in the domain of f. And again, that might sound a little convoluted, but let's, let's unpack it. So before we get into the, the shenanigans of the definition, let's just look at our graph, okay? So if you'll see here, I've got a high point, a low point, and a high point, right? So I'm gonna say this is a max, right? This is a min, and I know there's a lot of arrows on here, and this is another max. And let me just talk about why this is a max. Relatively speaking, this is a high point because you can see that initially as x, you're starting an x being negative one, as soon as you move left to right, you see my y values decrease. This is the highest y value relatively close. As long as I'm in this little ball of, uh, or this little interval of my graph, this is the highest y value. Now, this is, on, on the flip of that, excuse me, this is the low value, right? You can see if I move my little interval, right? This is a low y value. Anywhere near it, this is definitely the lowest point. So I've got a min. And on this, as the same, for the same reasons that this was a max, this is also a max, right? This is the high point, relatively speaking. So all three of these are absolutely relative maxes and relative mins, at least in this graph, okay? So it, before I get going on the absolutes, I can see I have two relative maxes and a relative min. Now, there are times, and it's not true for every graph, but there are times when on top of your relative maxes and mins, a couple of them become the absolute maxes and mins. And it really depends on the, the graph. It, there's, no, there's no rule like you'll always have an absolute max and you'll always have an absolute min. You've got to look at your graph. But let's take a look at this. Is there any point, is there any value for x where f of, and I'll call it c, where f of c is higher than every other val y value in there. And, and it is, it's here. This y value, if I look at it, this is two comma two. That y value two is higher than every other y value here. So what that means is not only this, is, is this a relative max, this is a global max or an absolute max, right? And you'll you can see that this y value two is higher than this y value of negative one, because this was the ordered pair negative one, negative one. And negative one is not as high as negative two, so this is the global max. So while they are both relative maxes, this one also gets the title of global max. And you can see here that this point, which was zero, negative two, this is my lowest y value. There is no other point that is lower than this, right? F of d, f of zero, is less than all other f of x values, right? Negative two is lower than everything on here. So not only is this a relative min, this now gets the extra title of global min. Now when, or absolute min, when we're going through this, you will at most have one absolute maximum value and one absolute minimum value. All right. It might happen in a couple of ordered pairs, but there's only going to be one of these. And it's not always the case where you have these. There are plenty of functions where there are no absolute maxes and there are no absolute mins. So just kind of taking a step back, relative maxes and mins, they come a dime a dozen. Okay? There's plenty of them in most functions. Not every function, but most. And for function, for the functions we'll look at, or any functions, there is at most one global maximum value and at most one global minimum value. There may be a couple of points where that maximum and minimum occur, which we'll see in example eight, but you're only gonna have one global max value and one global min value. All right, so let's scooch this up and let's see what we can figure out with example eight. All right, so we're gonna use a graph to locate absolute maxes and absolute mins. I'm also gonna have us do the relatives 
and I still want us to review up increasing and decreasing. So for the function f, shown in the figure below, find all absolute maxima and minima. Use these to determine the intervals on which the function is increasing and decreasing. And that's usually the order we go in. In previous examples, I had us look at increasing, decreasing initially. Um, and then um, in example six, we looked at local max and mins. Usually you find your extrema first and then determine your intervals of increasing, decreasing. So let's use the graph to figure this out. So as I'm looking through this, right, I see this is a, this looks like a local min. It's a low point, right? I see a local max. I'm just gonna do the relatives first, right? I see local min. I see another max. And then I see a min. All right, so like I said, relative maxes and mins, they come a dime a dozen, all right? We're gonna have plenty of them. Now, maximums and minimums are ordered pairs. So you owe me an X and a Y coordinate. So let's see if we can unpack where these are. This, I'm gonna start guessing, this local min looks like it's at about an X coordinate of negative 2.5. I'm just kind of estimating here. But that looks to be about negative 2.5 on the X axis. And what was the Y value? The Y value looks like it's at about 12. All right, so there was a min. Here's another min. That looks like that one is happening right on the origin. And here was my other min. That looks like it's at about three and then two, no, four, eight, maybe negative 10. Because again, this looks like the X coordinate of three if I'm rattling it off. And this looks like it's about negative 10. So I'm gonna say three, negative 10. Okay, now for relative maxes, let's see, we have this one and this one. So this looks like it's at about negative 2, 16. And 2, 16. Okay, so with that, that's great. We're gonna keep on moving with this. Some of these will become, or some of them might potentially become maxes or absolute maxes and absolute mins. So as we start to look at our function, okay, do we see anything in there that is the overall highest point or the overall lowest point? Now, when I look at this for absolute maxes, these are the highest points, right? There is no Y value that is higher. That's actually the, the top point of my range there. And yes, it happens at two places, all right, but that's still, the absolute max. I, I just happen to have two times where that, that max occurred. So I will have two absolute maxes here. I actually have negative 216 and 216. But I do want you to see I only had one absolute maximum value. And that's what I was trying to stress when we were talking about the definition. You will only ever have one absolute max or min value. It could occur at multiple points like it does here through symmetry but you'll only have one max or min value. And looking at this, all right, I also see this is my overall lowest point. And that minimum, that min was three negative 10. So that's the one that becomes my absolute minimum, okay? So I have a bunch of relative maxes and mins and quite a few, I would say, and fewer is what I should say, global maxes and mins. All right, so from here, once you've identified the X coordinates where all of these changes are happening, you can start to write up your intervals of increasing and decreasing. So let's take a look. I have here, I'm increasing from, well, it looks like we started from about negative 2.5 to this max of negative two. And then I decreased, but I increased again from zero, X equaling zero, Again, for intervals of increasing and decreasing, it's always the X coordinate. So X equaling zero to X equaling two. All right, and I'm gonna scooch this up a little bit more so that we can get those intervals of decreasing in. All right, so then I was decreasing from, it looks like X equaling negative two to zero. And then again from two to three. So things to just keep in mind that I want to reiterate, right? Anytime we're talking about intervals, this is only X values. Anytime we're talking maximums and minimums, 
right? These are ordered pairs. You owe me an X and a Y coordinate. And I also want to make a comment now that we've talked about absolute maxes and mins that you won't always have absolute maxes and mins. I want to go back to the equation we were working on in example seven. So let's head back to that. All right, let me grab my calculator and I'm going to go ahead and I entered that, that function into my calculator. So again, we're going back to the example seven um, function. Let me go find that one. All right, just so we have that reference. All right, so remember that function from example seven. I am gonna enter this into my calculator and I wanna show you that this function, while it had relative maxes and mins, it has no global maxes and mins. So if we remember, we'll adjust our, if I hit zoom six, I'm gonna to need to adjust my window because I couldn't see everything. So I'm just going to adjust it. I don't need any more in the x direction, but I am going to adjust it in the y. I'm going to go negative, we'll go negative 100 to 100. I'll go by tens. And I think that was a good looking view screen. Okay, so we talked in the last example, this was the relative max and this was the relative min. But I think you can see, right? You see that end behavior? Do you see how the graph is going right and up forever? Right? While this is a high point, relatively speaking, it is not a high point overall. Right? You see that thing goes up forever. So there is no absolute maximum here. Right? If, if I had been doing this problem, I would have written none. And on the flip of that, right? look, that was my relative min. But I think you can see that's not the lowest point. You see this arrow over here going left and down forever. So there is no absolute min either. So if I had been filling it out or filling this type of um, question out for the function in example seven, I would have had a relative max. I would have had the relative min, right? We knew that this was at negative 128. We knew this was at five negative 80, but it would have been none here. I would have had no absolute max and no absolute min. And just as a side note, anytime you have an odd degreed function like a cubic, you're not going to have an absolute max or absolute min. All right, so with that, that wraps up this section. So let's think back to what we, we've talked about, what we've learned here. We reviewed average rate of change, which again is a buzzword for slope, change in y over change in x. We've talked about functions and, uh, where functions are increasing, decreasing, or constant, and that you only use x values here, and parentheses but that for local maxes and mins, or even absolute maxes and mins for extrema, right? These are always ordered pairs. Okay. All right, so with that, we're gonna move on to section 3.4 and we're gonna review function composition. I'll see you in a few, bye.